Do y'all feel that? Do you feel it? Chicago Bears football is right around the corner. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the expectations that Matt Eberflus and DJ Moore have already set for Caleb Williams in his debut game. And what are some of the things the Bears need to look out for against the Titans? All that plus it's Friday, so it's mailbag day and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host, Eric Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. I want to start this off. Episodes mainly going to be built around your voicemails. We're going to start this off about quotes from for Matt Eberflus and DJ Moore on what they want to see Caleb Williams do in his debut game on Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. Matt Eberflus saying this, I'm excited to see him lean on his teammates because that's what you have to do with quarterbacks. He's got guys around him that have played a lot of years. Again, he's a rookie. So he's been leaning on those guys and getting the ball to those guys and letting them do their work. We have to do a good job of protecting, but yeah, just leaning in and learning on his teammates. And listen, that is the purpose of what Ryan Poles built here this season, this offseason. He built a team that it was there to put Caleb Williams as a number one overall pick in the best situation that any number one overall quarterback has walked into because typically a number one overall pick, especially at the quarterback position, is not walking into the best situation or scenario. And not to say that it's the best. We still know that we need to do some work on that offensive line. But what they, what they have done is help eliminate some of the questions, right? The offensive line is still dr- drastically improved, especially if they stay healthy uh, than, what, than what we had last year, right? But on top of that, you've gotten him really good number one wide receivers, right? When you look at Caleb Williams, DJ Moore, I'm sorry, Caleb Williams is the quarterback. When you look at DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze, this is one of the deepest wide receiver cores when you add in Tyler Scott and others that we've seen here for the Chicago Bears. You've gotten tight ends, which are really good for rookie quarterbacks as well. In, in Cole Komet, you got Gerald Everett. You even got the old vet in, in Mercedes Lewis there. And the, the running back situation is something that I, I don't know how confident. Like, we haven't talked a lot about the running backs as far as hearing it from Bears fans. Most of you guys that call in talk about the wide receivers. You talk about the defense. You talk about Caleb. But I think we are in, in a, even a good situation in that running back room. So, yeah, Caleb Williams is going to be able to lean on the vets, the players that have been around him, while also, you know, sharpening that, that, that raw skill that he does have and listen, he's one of he's a great decision maker. Now he still can be a gunslinger at times, and there's you know some some opportunities of that. Can he limit the fumbles, things like that? How much will he even have to run? But all those things are things that Caleb Williams is going to work on and grow through and go through over the course of his rookie year. And so I love that quote from Matt Eberflus. But DJ Moore added into this and said this: I just want to see him go out there and play football for real. He's a winner, so lead us to a win. Like everybody's been saying, he's got a bunch of weapons out there. Just go out there and point guard the ball like it's basketball, and he'll be all right. I'm not too worried about him. And listen, DJ Moore was one of the guys who was most ver- verbal towards the end of that season and, and uh, about, you know, Justin Fields staying here. And the fact that DJ Moore has seen the growth of Caleb Williams um, throughout this offseason I think says a lot about it as well. But another veteran, and Keenan Allen, also had this to chip in. He wants to get the ball out of his hands. Just get it to our hands, the playmakers, the talent the coach is talking about, and just let every everything happen for itself instead of trying to wait on plays that aren't really there. Try to create your own plays. That's, that's how you fall into mistakes and fall behind the downs and stuff like that. Just try to get us the ball early and let us work. So everybody is, seems, seem, is seemingly confident in Caleb Williams going through and learning the decisions to get the playmakers the ball and trusting his teammates to make the plays that they need to make so that we can be a successful football team. But make no mistake about it, Caleb Williams also has the expectation of himself to make big plays and game-winning plays. So, you know, I like the the, the thought process of go out there and point guard it, right? I love that. But that kind of sounds like game game manager, being a game manager to me. And we, of course, want, as the season goes on, for Caleb Williams to be more than that, right? And I think he's going to be shown to be more than that right away. But the decision-making that Caleb Williams has and the fact that he has so many vets is going to make that decision easier on him, I think is a perfect scenario, especially in this rookie year. And, you know, for what it's worth, Shane Waldron, the, the Seattle Seahawks, one of the um, teams that passed the most last season. And so Shane Waldron, I think, is going to really put those opportunities for Caleb Williams to pass the ball and make plays with his arm. And that's what Caleb is looking to do. While he is talented and can make plays with his legs, his first and foremost thing that he's trying to decide on and wait for the play to develop so that he can make a pass down the field. And if he needs to break off a play, 
and especially for a first down or anything with his legs, he's he's capable of doing that as well. He still is a dual threat quarterback, but he's one that's going to be trying to make those plays first down the field. And so we're going to get to see how this shapes out. And the offense is one of the things I'm most excited to see this the season for the Chicago Bears, how it goes. I've said it many times before. I kind of expect that defense to really start off right away being solid enough. They, they're going to improve over the season as well. But really, I'm looking for that first month of the season or so, first five or so weeks to see how Caleb Williams and the offense really start getting all on the same page and become that well-oiled machine. And I think that that's coming down the pipeline for sure. So make sure you guys, you know, we're, we're going to be here. We're going to be live on Sunday during the game. C-Dub's going to do a live call for those that are new. We've gotten a lot of new subscribers to the channel. If you're new, on game days, we do three live streams. We do a pregame show. We do a live call with C-Dub. And then we'll do a live post-game show as well. So you're going to get all three of those on the channel on game days. The pregame show goes down an hour before the game. The live call or watch along, whatever you want to call it, of course, starts at game time. And then the post-game show is literally right after the, uh, the, the final buzzer rings. Uh, and, and for the for the game, so make sure you guys stay tuned in for that. It's gonna be exciting. But with that said, what are some things that we need to look out for against the Titans? I'm talking about specific players, aspects of it. But one of the things, especially with the defense, I've talked a lot about the offense that I want to see from this offense is get to the quarterback. Now, put pressure. I should say on the quarterback, right? If you can do that early to Will Levis, you can throw him off his game. They added to the wide receiver core last uh, uh, this past off season. They've added to the trenches. But if you can get to Will Levis, listen here, that can disrupt that, that Tennessee Titans offense. And I hope that the Bears can do that consistently. Get pressure on the quarterback. You need to make Will Levis uncomfortable out there from the first snap to the final snap and make him have to think about that pressure that's coming, whether it be in the edge or in the interior, every single play. If you can get that eye level down to where he has to look and worry about that offensive line, that's where you can start disrupting, and it makes it easier job on your secondary as well. So getting pressure, if you can get pressure, whether it's, like I said, especially if you can get a pressure up the interior offensive line with Javon Dexter, Andrew Billings, Zach Pickens, Chris Williams, whoever is playing, Demarcus Walker, who's ever playing lined up on that interior defensive line, you need to get that. And then Montez Sweat, Austin Booker, Demarcus Walker out there, Daryl Taylor, these guys also need to be getting pressure out there from the edges. If you can do that and disrupt this pass game and make them a one-dimensional team so that they have to run the ball more than necessarily they expected to coming into this game, that's going to be the important part of it. So I want to see that from the Chicago Bears team as well. And in that running game, the linebackers got to show up. We cannot have a bunch of broken tackles. And this is something that I think the team has gotten a lot better on overall over the course of last season as well. You want to see that defense hit hard, wrap up, put them down, get them off the field. We got to get them off the field on third down scenarios. I would love to see the Titans have maybe a 30% uh, completion percentage on third down attempts. If you can do that, to me, that, that does enough to get in their heads as well. That's what I would love to see from this defense. I want to see this defense put fear in the rest of the NFL with what they do to Will Levis and this team to, uh, uh, on Sunday. I almost said tonight. Got a couple. I'm excited if you can't tell. And then lastly, the secondary got to show that they are one of the best secondaries in the game of football. I want to see that from the opening tip. I want to see everything from the opening kickoff tip. I'm still in basketball mode um, from the opening kickoff. I want to see this 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 uh, secondary be what we all think that they can be, what they have talked about that they want to be. Get the takeaways, force them to think about who they're going to pass to, force them to, to take away one side of the field to them because they're not going to pass to Jalen Johnson. We need to see all those things. In, uh, on Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. And if we do, listen, it's academic. And so, you know, I, you know, I don't want to overlook the Titans. There are some Bears fans, C-Dub being one of them, that thinks that this Titans matchup is going to be a cakewalk. I'm, the Bears have not proven anything to overlook anybody. You have to come in. You have to make your presence felt. And you got to make the Titans feel you. That's what I want to see walk away from this. I want to say that we disrupted and made the Titans feel the Chicago Bears defense. I almost said the Chicago Bears D. That would have been a pause, but I didn't say it. Thank God for my brain uh, correcting me on that one. But I still, I guess I said it after the fact, so now it's still out there. Don't pull that clip. But with that said, so that's what I want to see from this Bears defense. I want to see a dominating defense Sunday against the Tennessee Titans, and let's hope that it could be done. But with that said, Let's go ahead and get into the main part of this episode, and that is your voicemails. Love this. This is one of the things that makes Chicago Bears Central unique. You get two voicemail episodes every single week. Get into this first one. 
This one's from Xavier. You know, what's going on, fellas? Uh, this is Xavier calling in, man. I just want to uh, speak on the whole George McCaskey saying that we need to have patience. Man, look, I don't want to hear jack shit from anybody in the McCaskey family, bro. Like, I don't want to hear anything, bro. I am sick of them as owners, bro. Because my thing is, yes, bro, you talking about how patience, I agree. Caleb is a rookie. No shit. We know he's going to have growing pains, bro. We know this. Come on, bro. We're not fucking stupid. But for you to say have patience, when we've been having patience for the past, then my whole existence and before, bro, I'm 35 years old and we never had a real quarterback in Chicago. Let's be real, bro. We we When we did have him, we either drafted some fucking bums that didn't pan out or we went and fucking traded for people who didn't pan out. So did we not have patience when we had uh, Kate McNow? Uh, did we not have patience with Eric Kramer? Do we not have patience with uh with, with Rex Grossman and Kyle Orton and Chad Hutchinson? And uh did we not have patience when we went and got Cordell Stewart when he was on his fucking last leg? Did we not have patience with uh with with uh Jay Cutler? Did we not have patience with uh Trubisky? Bro, yes, we get it, bro. We understand that that we have to have patience with Caleb, but please don't tell us about patience for his fans. Because we've been patient long enough. Not having a quarterback, bro. So that's all I had to say, man. Like, bro, the McCaskey family be pissing me off, bro. George and Virginia, old ass too, bro. Like, shit, no disrespect to him. You feel me? Love the lady. Hopefully she keep living and all that shit. But, man, they, hey, bro, I don't want to hear shit about patience from them when they fucking ran this organization poorly for the past my whole existence, bro. So uh, that's all I had to say, bro. Uh, Chicago up better. Listen, I get what you're saying. Xavier, make no mistake about it. And as Bears fans, our patience has always been tested. I, th- I don't think anybody's going to disagree with you on that one. But what McCaskey is saying is that I've seen it here. And, and maybe you don't in your circles. You may have a bunch of super intelligent football fans around you. And for that, I appreciate you. But one thing in doing this job that you notice is that there are people that have unrealistic expectations on Caleb Williams. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to in the comment section of this YouTube channel that have said that, oh, Caleb Williams can't have a normal rookie year. He can't. If he's supposed to be generational, we drafted him one overall, he has to come in and at least do what C.J. Stroud did last year. And that's idiotic. It's stupid. Now, if he can do it, to say that he has the ability to do it is one thing. But to set that as an expectation to say he has to do that or it's a fail is idiotic to me. Because great quarterbacks, there have been some all-time great quarterbacks that haven't necessarily had the best first seasons in, in, in the NFL. So that's what I think McCaskey's talking about. I completely get your frustration when you look like when you look at the last 30 years. I understand you, bro. I would say this, is that there are a lot of Bears fans that are patient with Caleb, but there is probably that vocal, smaller community, though, that is not patient. And that does have unrealistic expectations. And that's what I take that McCaskey was speaking to. I didn't take any any issue with with McCaskey saying that because there are some people that need to hear now they don't give a shit right hey I've even played voicemails on mailback episodes of people not being patient with Kayla Williams they don't care but but it's all rooted in the same thing they want this team to get to where it can get to and let's hope that that's the case let's hope that is the case but I, I completely understand your perspective as well Xavier all right let's get into this next one this one's from my boy K2 Yo, 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 what up, fellas, man? It's your boy K2, man. I know I ain't called in a minute, man. I've just been sitting back. I've been chilling, and I've just been waiting for the season to start. And we're getting that much closer, fellas. One more week until we get to see Chicago Bears football. Now, I just want to call in real quick, man, because I got a whole bunch of optimism in my heart. And I hope that y'all understand where I'm coming from, and I hope that y'all hear me out, because I know y'all say, you got to worry about, you know, you got to worry about the other side of the fence. But let's talk about the good side of the fence for one second, man. See, let me tell y'all something about Caleb Williams. See, I love this kid, man. Like, you know, I had my dispositions about him, but now I just know he's the type of person that we need in Chicago, man, because his humility is key to his season, right? Because I believe we going to have the most savviest rookie veteran QB we've ever seen in league history. And I say this because of this, man. First, I want to talk about a comment that he made on the last Hard Knocks video. And I don't know if anybody caught it because nobody really talked about it. But it was a segment of Tyson Bajan. Now, yes, I'm, I love Tyson Bajan, too. That's my boy. I'm a Bajan, uh, the, a Bajan baddie to the death. That kid got a winning mentality, too, man. But I understand he's number two, but we ain't here to talk about him. That's another story. I just want to talk about what Kayla Williams said to him. Now, Kayla Williams said in one of those segments, if you just rewind and go back, he said, Hey, I learned things from you. 
he said that to Tyson Bajan. Now, I'm not saying that he is, uh, 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 you know, like anything inferior to, we all know Caleb Williams is the better quarterback, but to be that type of humble is what we need in Chicago, bro. And like, everybody knows when you're the number one, uh, number one pick, you go into a bad situation. Caleb Williams is not going into a bad situation, bro. He got three number one wide receivers. He got two number one tight ends. He got a running game. He got a top five defense, bro. If we just sit back and think about that, bro, what rookie wall? We only thing we can talk about is the offensive line, and I get that, bro. The offensive line needs to show that they can play better, but I guarantee you our offensive line looks eighty percent better from the few years uh, past few years. And that's because of who Caleb Williams is as a, as a quarterback, bro. He knows how to manipulate the pocket. He's a passer, bro. That's what he does. So I think for the first time ever in NFL history, we will see a rookie quarterback that looks like a veteran. We will see a rookie quarterback that looks like a veteran, man. I just want y'all to hold y'all hat on that. A rookie quarterback that looks like a veteran, man. I hope y'all having a good weekend. Happy Memorial Day. And just to let y'all know, Chicago up. And bear down, baby. Let's go. Listen, yes. Caleb Williams is walking into one of the best situations that a rookie quarterback has ever had, but he's still a rookie. And just because you, you, you've done enough to help limit the mistakes, the mistakes are still there. That is why you've done something. They're going to be there. And some of those mistakes that rookies make are regardless of who's around them. They're just by the nature of making it. So to say that a first-year vet, I get what you're getting at. And I get the thought process because Caleb Williams, the way that he reads defenses, his ability to manipulate the pocket, everything that you basically name there, I agree with you. But still, even in that, there are going to be some rookie mistakes. And that's just like how you can have some people that are really smart people. Smart people do dumb shit sometimes. And, you know, that just is what it is. Like, so it's going to some of those mistakes are going to be there. So, you know, he's going to have a rookie season and he's going to make some of those rookie mistakes. And like the thing that I've been saying, the thing that will separate him to me is how quickly he learns from those rookie mistakes. Right. Some people stay making rookie mistakes their whole entire rookie year. And then in the second year, they adapt to that. If, if Caleb is able to learn from it week to week, like we've heard that he's done already in training camp, that's what can make this rookie year special for Caleb Williams. So I get what you're getting at, but even with that said, rookies are still going to make rookie mistakes. That's why they're rookie mistakes. You can do so much, only so much to help limit it and to put him in a better position. There's still going to be some of those rookie mistakes there, K2. But overall, I think that we're going to see a really good season from Caleb Williams. I think he's going to shatter every Chicago Bears rookie uh, starting quarterback uh, record, and I'm not mad at that. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Fred. What up, what up, hey? This your boy Fred. What it do, man? Hey, it's that time, man. You know, time to separate the man from the boys. Football is back again. Especially Bear football, man. So, let's, let's get damn it shit. I, I'm just ready. I'm geeked up. I'm excited. You know, I want to see what our new squad looking like. I ain't been excited for Bears football I can't remember when, but I just know I'm excited, man. I'm ready to go. Y'all know I'm going to be calling in, you know what I'm saying? You know, giving my, you know, intake on the game as well with you guys, man. And I just want to say again, man, I appreciate and love what you guys do for us fans, man, giving us the bare news first and information that we always need. Keep doing what y'all doing. No shout out to the Cognac guys as well, Steve-O and, and Big Cav as well, man. Love what y'all do, man. Continue to do what y'all do, man. I'm going to have me some cigars, you know, have me a little, you know, cognac or some bourbon or something with it, you know what I'm saying, and just enjoy the game, watch my team whoop on the Titans. Hopefully, you know, Caleb have a good game, DJ have a good game. Keep, hope the whole damn team just have a good game, you know what I'm saying, all together. So, yeah, I'm about ready, you know what I'm saying, watch, watch you know what I'm saying, football, man. It's back, and I'm excited, man. And I'm ready to definitely hear you guys, you know, put y'all intake on it. And laugh at you guys as well. And shit, just have a good time, man. So, this, like, this is like my favorite show, you know, to call in and watch you guys all the time, man. Because y'all boys be having me rolling. Y'all give us details and everything, man. And shout out to all the fans, you know, everybody that call in as well, too. Shout out to Darius, Marifa, you know, Bucker. You know, all the guys, you know, that call in and, and give their input as well, too. So, shit, it's time to, you know what I'm saying, put that orange and blue on. It's time, you know what I'm saying, to, to bet down Chicago up, and we're going to bet out around this bitch, baby. You know, week one, shit. I'm definitely going to have me some new Bears gear because I know, hey, you, you stay fresh with that Bears gear. I got to catch up with you, my brother. So, shit, let's all bet out around this motherfucker, man, and give our support. And y'all continue to do what y'all do, CBC gang. 
Jeez. I'm, I'm up out of here. This, be, this your boy Fred, man. Chicago up, man down to nothing. Man, separating the the men from the boys. Hey, let separate yourself from the wind, my boy. Hey, let, let, just a joke to Fred. Hey, that wind was howling though, bro. That hawk was out. Um, so yeah, separate yourself from the wind there, my brother. Which you did towards the end of the voicemail, but I had to throw the joke in there anyway because it's my boy Fred. Uh, but with that said, man, we're all excited about this, Fred. I think it goes without saying we are all extremely excited about what this team can be this year, what they can be. Now we got to see them bring it together for what they can be what it looks like on paper, how things are fitting together. It all looks great. Let's make sure that we're going to get it. But I think everybody is excited right now about what the Chicago Bears can be. You're starting to see it even in the national media. Not that that matters. We don't give a damn. That's why we're here. Um, But, you know, one thing that I've learned from doing this show and me being super excited last season is I just want to see it. I just want to just give me one game of it. And then I'll then I'll let my excitement go all out, out the wazoo. But right now, I'm um, kind of keeping it a little bit contained just because, you know, it is what it is there. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Booker. Yo, 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 Hayes, what's good, man? This book blesses to you and yours. We are here, finally, man. Opening day, opening week. Man, I'm excited, man. I saw a good game last night, man. It, it was, I'm really excited for the season, man. I can't wait till Sunday, man, to see the Bears put in work. I want to talk about Eberflus, man. I think, uh... I think this is the year, man, that we finally see and accept that he can and will be a good to great coach in this league, man. The, the, you can tell how much respect the organization has for him, not just the players and not just polls, but the organization, period. I also feel like, and it ain't just like the beard and, and, and the new look, man. I think Fluce has upgraded himself coaching-wise, too, man. You could tell from the command that he has from this team and the way that he, you know, was putting his foot down if you're on a couple episodes of uh, Hard Knocks, man, when he told him, like, with the joint practice, man, any 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 BS and you out of here, you know. First year, Foose ain't saying that to the team. First year, Foose was more of a cheerleader. All right, guys, let's go. Good for None of that, man. I feel that he's going to be a good coach, and I feel he's going to be our head coach for many years to come, man. And I feel this year, finally, for the first time, the Bears are going to come out with their heads on fire and come out ready to play on opening day. But that's all I wanted to say, man. There's nothing more to be said, man. Now it's just time for action. I just want to uh, let y'all know, man, have a good weekend, man. Chicago up, Bear down. And I'll holler at you. Listen, Flus has definitely evolved to his next form. I, don't ho- I hope it's not his final form because I hope he keeps evolving. But he's definitely hit his next form, right? He's definitely hit Super Saiyan 1. Now, can, we, can, he go, can he go on the next level other than that, right? Like, that's what, that, that's what we're hoping to see. But, yeah. Uh, Matt Eberflus just seems so much more poised. He seems so much more direct. He seems so much more at peace. And it, it, it may come from a confidence of a lot of things, confidence in this roster. You know, like I've talked about before, seeing your own mortality, hearing that they had to deliberate for three days to decide if you're going to keep your job, having a better staff as well on top of the talent that you have here. And, and I think at some point also realizing like, hey, just go out there and do it. Like if you fail, you fail, you, you lose your job. Yeah, that sucks. But go out there and, and take advantage, build those relationships with these players that you have here, and let's take this thing to the next level. And I think that that's what Matt Eberflus has shown. He seems like he's newly confident. Even when he talks in, in, to, the, to the press now, he's a lot more confident. We are seeing an evolution of Matt Eberflus, and I've said it before. The growth and evolution of Matt Eberflus is just as important as the growth of development of Caleb Williams over this rookie season. It just is. That's how you raise the ceiling of your team, your coaching can limit great talent if you have a terrible coach it can limit great talent so coaching matters in that as well so let's hope that that's the case and uh yeah i love what we've seen from maddie buffoo so so far i love it i love it all right let's get into the last voicemail today this one's from b makes man what's happening it's your boy b makes from the two drinks with the fellas podcast on youtube y'all go ahead and check that out man shout out to my boy hayes bobby c dub big kev steve-o um shout out to y'all man and your families make sure y'all will um, I want to bring up a topic that I know ain't nobody really talking about. I ain't really trying to repeat stuff that everybody else can brought up. But just think about this. I know we got great safeties. I ain't going to say great. We got real good serviceable safeties, right? And they real good at hitting folks. But I think the one weakness that we got on our defense is the deep coverage. I'm telling y'all, I said it here today. Watch out. Watch out all these over-the-top plays over the defense. That's probably going to be the weakest link on our defense. Ball's going to be going over their heads like the, the Hayes PP jokes. But they can hit and do great things in the short and medium plays. It's just the cornerbacks going to have to be working their ass off. 
and Jalen jo- uh, Johnson and uh, Tyreek Stevenson cold as hell. Um, but they're gonna have to work their ass off, especially dealing with a uh, uh, older um Mikael. I think I think that boy named Mikael. No, uh, a uh, Bird, uh, Bernard, whatever his name is, and um Jaquan Brisker, and he be um he be getting too many concussions, but neither here nor there on that shit. Um. He needs to watch that. Just discuss it and, and tell me what y'all think about this deep coverage and um, how it's going to look out. Remember, I brought this up before the season started. Um, I had to come and bust the show. Um, took a little short break. Um, you know, wanted to hear some other fans get on the show. And i um, glad, glad to see everything going good with the uh, best, for real, for real. Um, I had to take some time, you know, to heal myself as a best fan, the bastards. But, um, yeah, just let me know when y'all ready to do that whole central roast. I'll be on there. For real, though, I'm excited about football and y'all post-game coverage. Take a shot for me. We're going to link up Chicago up there down. The Bears deep cover. I'm not as concerned about it as you. I think Kevin Bayard is going to be fine in it. Um, I know that we had some issues with that last season, make no mistake about it, but I think the, 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 the relationship between the pass rush and the pass coverage is going to be able to jumpstart the season and really get off to a great start. And because of that, I think we're going to see our, our corners and our safeties and everybody have an ability to, to, to limit that. So I understand the concern. I'm not saying you're crazy for having that concern. And if it does end up being something, you're not wrong. I mean, well, I'll definitely give you credit for it. But I think ultimately it just comes down to I have confidence in the second. That's the group I'm the most confident in. And because of that, I see it being okay now. Now, there are some zone coverage things outside of the talent, right? Like I would like to see us go to man a little bit more in situations. And maybe Matt Eberflus does that a little bit more, but there are some inherent issues with the antiquated cover two system that we run that kind of create some opportunities and lanes for smart quarterbacks and smart offensive coordinators to take advantage of. So, you know, that isn't a chance that that could happen and you could absolutely be right on that. But let's hope that the talent overshines that. And that's all we can hope for, B-Mace. But that's my time for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearcentral at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. And I like I like to end everything on Chi Town up but Bear Down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.